Well, hi there, I'm Noah Bradley, and this is Handmade House TV. On this week's episode, in fact, the next few episodes, we're gonna talk all about slate roofing. So stay tuned. So yeah, we're gonna talk about one of my favorite subjects there is slate roofing, perhaps the ultimate roofing. I, I can't imagine, I've never encountered a better roofing than what slate roofing is. It's, I really do love it. Uh, I'm also a big fan of, of uh, metal roofing, in particular copper, uh, and also I've done my share of cedar roofing, but the ultimate roofing, the, my favorite roofing, is slate roofing. And there's a variety of reasons for that. And you can see behind me here, I've started uh, to already put the slate roofing up. I've got this side of this little log cabin with the slate roofing on top of it. And I think it really looks good. It, it makes it makes the home look super rich. It's just, it's an incredible beauty to the uh, a true slate roof. I can say with absolute confidence that I will never have to replace the roof on this shed. My children will never have to do it my grandchildren will never have to do it and most likely my great-grandchildren will never have to do replace this roof on that's how durable a slate roof is it's not only beautiful but it's durable and as a result of it being durable no matter how much you paid for the slate no matter how much you paid for the labor for an individual to put it on top of your roof over time it becomes the least expensive roof there is because it is so durable because it so lasts so long and also you don't have to put up with all that mess of every 15 to 20 years someone coming in and replacing your roof someone over top your house your wrist roof leaf, leaky roofs or whatever else uh, so slate roof is is the way to go it, it's the most attractive it's the most economical and it, it really causes the preservation of structures as well. If you, if you invest in your home, if you use the best products, if you make your home as attractive as it possibly can be, then future owners of it are gonna feel more motivated to take care of it. You're gonna get a higher caliber of people that buy your home. You're gonna get a higher value for it when you sell it. People are going to invest in the maintenance and upkeep of it. And that only helps in the longevity of a house going uh, lasting forever. The three keys to a long lasting house are A, a good foundation, the best foundation you can do, the best roof you can do, and the best design you can do. If you do those three things, your house will be around for centuries. So when it, so I decided to do this roof here. Now, typically when I would do a shed, uh, I have done uh, my variety of roofs before in the past, um, and it was very tempting for me to go ahead and do a metal roof here. A metal roof is, it's quicker. Uh, there are less pieces to put up on top of it. Uh, and, and But nonetheless, slate roofing offers to you, it offers to me a wonderful virtue in the fact that it's, it's easy. There's nothing really complicated about slate roofing. It's a matter, and there's nothing heavy, there's nothing awkward, and there's not a whole lot of tools needed in order to work with slate. In next week's episode, I'm gonna show you all about the tools. The, the, really, there's one or two that you need tops uh, and, you're, and you're set to do it. And I will not only show you the tools you need, but how to use them. They're, they're, and as a matter of fact, it's very enjoyable work. Um, and uh, so uh, the, the slate that I acquired for here, uh, you have the option of, of going straight to a quarry and ordering the slate and getting the slate yourself directly out of the ground as it's milled. Uh, but obviously you're gonna pay a premium price for that. Now, uh, I've mentioned it before here, and I mean no insult to any other parts of the planet. Uh, but by far the best slate that you can acquire is, is Buckingham slate out of Buckingham County, Virginia. Uh, the, slate, the slate here is of the highest quality there is. It will last the longest time. I think they estimate that it lasts 175 years. Uh, but I have taken slate off of roofs that are off of homes that were two centuries old. And the slate was just as sound as what you could buy at the quarry. And I had every reason to believe that they'll last another century or two without any difficulty. And so when it came time for me to acquire the slate for this particular structure, 
um, I, I, I went ahead and started shopping for used slate. Now, when you start looking for used slate, you're going to get a, a variety of things. Uh, first of all, you're going to get uh, individuals that think theirs are, are designed just for craft work, and therefore they'll want 10 to $20 a piece for somebody to do a little artwork on it or something, and that's not the kind of people you want. When you're shopping for slate, you want to make sure and acquire enough for the structure that you're building or at least enough for that aspect of the roof that you want to do. If you're doing a house with a, uh, two sections of it, maybe you can get away with a, a one type of slate on, on one section and a different type on the other. Um, and uh, so you want to make sure and be able to acquire enough uh, and then that includes wastage as well uh, and uh, and you want it to ideally match as well and it's very possible if you were to buy some Buckingham and you were to buy some out of Pennsylvania uh, that they're, they're not going to match there there's, there's no doubt about it so you really want slate that matches you want it to be sized appropriate to the structure you're building now if I'm building a church or a mausoleum or you know something something huge uh, I want I want uh, I want large slate on it. I want to cover as much square footage as possible. I don't want to be using little tiny pieces. And so when I was building this little tiny log cabin here, I wanted little tiny uh, pieces of slate. So I had in mind the, the amount of coverage that I needed because I was building the shed. Uh, I was looking on all of the online uh, places and uh, local newspapers, uh, you know, everything from Craigslist to Angie's List to uh, Habitat for Humanity to uh, you know, there's there's eBay, there's there's just all kinds of online forums for used materials. Now, uh, typically, uh, folks that when they're selling slate, uh, they see what other people are asking, and so they're asking just as much. Uh, I hesitate to give you prices, but nonetheless, if you look on there today, as of the video that I'm doing right here, probably the rock bottom price you're going to see is about a buck a slate, uh, and you're going to probably see it in the three to five dollar a piece range. And all of that is a bargain compared to buying it brand new. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, things to consider in buying the slate is you want to make sure that uh, A, it comes from Buckingham, if at all possible. Uh, B, you want it in good shape. You want it, uh, you don't want uh, a lot of, you know, first of all, you definitely don't want it so it's crumbly. Uh, if you notice any crumbling uh, pieces where, where even, if you can find a few bad crumbly ones where it's eroding, where you can chip it off with your finger, little pieces. Uh, then you know it's 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 seen its best days, and you want to stay away from that. Generally, Buckingham slate doesn't do that. It just it just shatters and falls to pieces as it ages. Um, and so you want to make sure it's in in good shape, uh, and that there's enough of it's right size, right place. And uh, also, you want to uh, make sure that uh, how it's how it's been stored, how it's been cared for. Uh, and that is that if you ever see slate that's been stored outside where, where one piece is laid flat upon the other, uh, you, you want to you approach that very carefully. And that is, for whatever reason, slate laid flat outside tends to absorb water when it rains. The water gets between the slates. Uh, and it, the stack of it, when it's stacked up one on top of the other, uh, it, it's a tremendous amount of weight to it. And, uh, and with the freezing and thawing, uh, the slates will expand and, and with all the weight on top of them, you'll find that in a pile stacked in such a manner that you'll find that they, they crack up a lot. There's a lot, of, a lot of damaged slates down in the pile. So when you go to look at your pile of slate, you want to you make sure it's been stored properly. And if it hasn't been, then you probably want to dig through a pile or two all the way down and see how many damaged slates might be in there. Uh, and then, of course, there's a there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of manual labor to working with slate as far as uh, finding it, uh, finding the best deal, talking about it, seeing if it meets all the qualifications of your particular project, and then going to get it and then loading it all up piece by piece and bringing it to your site and unloading it piece by piece. Uh, it would have been a lot easier for me just to have gone to Lowe's or Home Depot and 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 checked the box and and uh, got me some asphalt shakes and and somebody th throw them in the back of my truck and then uh, and then I can apply it in a few minutes time and I'm done and it's over with. But asphalt shingles on top of this little log cabin would have been a crime. It would have looked awful. Uh, it would have looked 
I, I, I couldn't live with myself. I've never done an asphalt shingle roof, and I've been building houses for decades, a long time. So, uh, so uh, asphalt. So, I, so I managed to find what I felt was just the right shingles for me for this particular project. And I, beyond a doubt, there's more than enough to do this little structure, and there might be enough to to contribute to or or make tremendous headway on my next little building that I'm going to be building in 2020. I can't wait to share that one to you. If, you're, if you like post and beam, you're going to absolutely love what we're going to build after this. Uh, and so anyway, I did find this, uh, find this slate and, and what it was, I found it, of all things, in Buckingham County. So I was pretty confident of, of uh, the quality of the slate. And, uh, and it was just the right size. It had been salvaged from, a, from an old country store. And I kind of like that. I like the feeling that a it has history, uh, and a country store feels kind of good. And also, you're you're actually recycling. You're 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 not causing any manufacturing. You're not. There's no strip mining going on in the world. There's you know there's no uh, factories pumping out um, gases or whatever in order to create the building materials. It's, it's extremely natural. It's a recycled product. Uh, the the immediately when I saw this listing, I knew that this was probably the one that I wanted to go with, because the individuals had were the kindest, most wonderful people. First of all, they were just they were sweet people, uh, but they had uh, that they had stored them all outside and uh, all all outside. They did stack them properly, but they stacked them all right on the topsoil, right on the ground. Uh, and of course, uh, 10 years of, of uh, vines growing up in them, of leaves falling down on top of them, uh, they, were, they were about a third of the way buried into the ground. Uh, it does not affect the, the, life, um, the life expectancy of the slate in any way, but they were dirty, they were grimy, and their picture in the listing was anything but appealing. So I had a feeling that I could get myself a fairly decent bargain on, on purchasing them, and I did. And uh, so I went down and I got them, and I brought them here, and I unloaded them. And I and, and, uh, did find that uh, in the process of loading them that probably one out of five of them had a chipped corner on it. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to take care of a chipped corner in our next episode here on Handmade House TV. Um, and uh, so there was a little bit of damage, but that's okay uh, because you need some some varying pieces. You need a little bit of difference in size. And when you're working on a shed, hey, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, so um, so I ended up getting a really good deal. Uh, I met some great people. I, I put out some exercise in order to do that, but I really learned a lesson here, and that is this is the first time I've really bought dirty slate. I mean, it was just dirty and the reason why I want to do is I really want to demonstrate to you guys how economical I can build a handmade log shed and if you can build a, a handmade log shed you can build a handmade log home uh, it's just upping the scale of it, increasing the lengths of it so if I can show you how to achieve something truly sweet uh, in, in a smaller scale uh, by, by being efficient, by shopping for bargains, then, um, well, then I've succeeded in my mission and that's what I want to do. So anyway, by buying such dirty slate, what I ended up doing was a, basically that I either put them up dirty on the structure and count on years worth of rain in order to wash them uh, clean or else I have to wash each one of them one at a time. And fortunately, I, I have a good wife and she's been helping me take care of uh, cleaning the slate as it comes through and fortunately there's not that many it's not like we're doing an entire home uh, but that's something for you to keep in mind you want you want clean slate you don't want muddy slate unless you're looking for a real a real bargain uh, anyway it worked out to be that I got these slate for I think I figured it out to like 15 cents a piece uh, which uh, you can't you can't beat that uh, with a stick so what's the negative? What's there's got to be something bad about slate? Why would why why doesn't everybody use slate if it's cheap in the long term? And that is because uh, a our society wants to save money now. Uh, most people don't think beyond at least their own lifetime worth less the next few years or the as long as they think they're going to live in a home. 
and that's the reason why we're not doing it. If if we would be, if, think about it, if we, everybody was doing slate roofs on their homes, the the benefit to future generations and not having to do, replace all those homes roofs uh, across the country, across the globe. It's, uh, there, there's plenty of slate in the ground. There's no there's no shortage of uh, stone. Uh, but uh, one uh, other one disadvantage of of slate is is that a lot of folks like the sound of rain on a tin roof, on a metal roof. And so many people are drawn to the wonders of having a metal roof. Now, uh, a copper roof will last you 75 to 100 years with no maintenance. Uh, you, can, you can very well get that out of a turn roof, but you'll have to paint the, the, uh, the, the metal every six to eight years in order to make it last. Uh, a lifetime. Uh, so there is some maintenance, but paint's not that expensive, especially if you put it on yourself. Uh, but most people really, they want to they want to hear that rain. If they're, they're associated with living in the country, you want to hear that pitter patter of going on. But uh, one of the insights that I can give you, and that is that if you're if you're uh, building your home that and you're going to put porches off of it, generally the pitch of a porch roof is so shallow uh, that slate's not the best roof for a shallow pitched roof. Uh, that it's better at a, at a steeper pitched roof, and I'll I'll let you decide what the pitch what you would tolerate would be. Uh, there are different techniques in order to enable a slate to be put on lower pitched roofs, uh, but a lot of times I recommend people that want that pitter patter of metal, but uh, they really like the beauty and richness and durability of slate, to go ahead and put the slate on their home and then on the porch roofs to go ahead and put metal there. So, uh, and that way you get, you get the pitter patter and you get also the durability over top of your home of slate. Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me. I, I'm sorry for rambling on so much, but I'm a big fan of slate. Uh, in our next episode, I'm going to show you about the, the tools that you need in order to do slate work. Um, and uh, I really look forward to sharing that with you. Thank you so much for joining me here on Handmade House TV. Thank you for subscribing to this channel. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for your comments. Uh, thank you for coming over to Handmade Houses and signing up for our free newsletter there. And uh, if you like what I'm doing, if you like what I'm sharing with you, and you want to build a handmade house for yourself, a stone home, a log cabin, uh, or a, a timber frame, uh, I've put together academies over there that are hours long and much more detailed than I could ever go here uh, on uh, Handmade House TV. I really would uh, I'd recommend you to come over and take a look at it. Uh, the information is great. It's, it's uh, wisdom and advice uh, based off of decades of building some really f incredible homes that uh, I'm very proud of. Anyway, uh, you guys take care. Uh, I, really, I really appreciate everything you do for me. And uh, we'll see you next week here on Handmade House TV. Bye now.